slums of America, poor white people. Being white and being poor seems to be an oxymoron. From a minority's point of view, whatever happened to white privilege? And that is where things get interesting because it is, the perception is that if you're white, the sky is the ceiling, that you have all the opportunities, that the world lies in front of you. But then when you're white and poor, it seems that a lot of people cannot wrap their heads around that. So let us talk about the history of white people in America. You need to, but to your, for you to understand that, you need to go back all the way to, well, when slavery was in vogue in America. One of the things that actually happened was that during the migration, a lot of poor Europeans were being persecuted in Europe uh, because they were poor, marginalized. So they thought the land of the free and uh, they all migrated. Uh, to America. But when they got to America, shock and surprise, because then they discovered, well, it is not a land for everyone. So much of the character and condition of poor whites is rooted in this institution of slavery rather than provide wealth as it had for the southern elite. So most of the people that actually came where from the east they would land in the east of the united states and they would go to the south and a lot of the scottish people other europeans were there but when they got there there was also competition because everyone was trying to live the american dream and this is when it gets interesting because they were crowded out and the crowded out effect is basically this they came in looking for work and opportunities, but the rich southern landowners who had slaves had their workforce. So if you could buy a slave and the person can work for you for 50, 60 years until they die, why would you want to employ a white person who would want a salary and who would want equality? So the poor white people coming into the South at the time were competing for jobs that were already done by the slaves and that did not go down well. So they went from one situation where they were poor in Europe and when they got to America, well, they were still poor because the conditions was just rough. So throughout American history, the poor whites have regularly been referred to by various names. For example, uh, they are called rednecks, hillbillies in Appalachia, crackers in Texas and Georgia, and hosiers in St. Louis. Basically, everything to degrade the white poor people, and some are even called poor white trash. So, and you're thinking, who invented this? Well, these were a derogatory term that was invented by the rich white elite who despised the poor white people. They viewed them as undesirable, lesser, or antisocial. So it denoted a sort of separation reflective of social hierarchy. So when the, when you're at the top, you want people who are, you, you have just slaves. So th there's a hierarchy there. You are higher, you are on top of the food chain, and you can do whatever you want with your slaves, beat them, get them to do whatever, rape the women, you get the idea. Then these poor white people came in and they wanted to, because they thought because they were white, they were going to move up, but it did not go down that well for them. So a lot of these people started to live in slums because while well, the conditions was very hard, they had to uh, resort to uh, subsistence farming, uh, wear old clothing. They, they, their situation was slightly only better than the slaves because, well, they were white, but because they were poor, their economic situation was just bad and then why did it even get worse for the poor white people living in slums in america in the south especially in the appalachian region first of all political opportunism they were the elite wanted to have a way to separate them from the the, the, the normal rich white people so one of the things they did was uh, uh, this was summarized by john t campbell's in the broad acts of uh, a book written in 1906. He said, in the past, white men have hated white men quite as much as some of them hate the Negro. 
and have vented their hatred with as much savagery as they have against the Negro. The best educated people have the least race prejudice. In the United States, the poor white were encouraged to hate the Negroes because they could then be used to help the Negroes in slavery. The Negroes were taught to show contempt for poor white people because this would increase the hatred between them and each side could be used by the master to control the other. And that is an interesting uh, point because then it shows that when you have the, the, the idea is conquer and divide. The more you get poor white people to hate those who they thought were taking advantage of the system, the, 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 the black people, then they fight uh, amongst each other and that's fine. Then the elite can just rule because you divide and conquer. So this kept a lot of the white people, uh, poor white people thinking their biggest problem were the black people. And even after slavery was abolished, they, uh, be they showed a lot of hatred toward those who were not probably the cause of their problems. And another thing was the idea of white supremacy, because they really wanted to separate themselves from the, the, the black people that they couldn't think outside the box that, look, most of our problems are actually coming from other white people, especially the elite, the rich people. So they would join like white supremacist group just to make sure to feel better about themselves that, you know, at least we're better than the other minorities. And that did not help their cause because then it means their anger. Instead of trying to build themselves and focus on the real problem, they were just uh, uh, pushing out their anger against uh, other victims of the same system. And then white people also had issues with forced sterilization. And the American eugenics movement encouraged a legalization of forced sterilizations. In practice, individuals who came from poor white backgrounds were often targeted, particularly institutionalized individuals and fertile women, because the idea was that they, the elite hated the poor white people so much that they just wanted them to stop uh, procreating. Unlike the slaves, if you own a slave, the more children they have born into slavery, it's good for your business. But other white people, they just hated them. And this part, part of this hatred actually stems from the uh, uh, conflict in Europe where you have the English fight and the, the uh, Scots and then the Irish and uh, other uh, tribes or groups in Central Europe fighting each other. So. They took the hatred with them. Once they got to America, it was business as usual, and that did not go down very well. And another thing that the elite used to uh, dominate the poor white people was elections. So further evidence of the hostility of the ruling class towards the poor white is found in the enactment of several southern states of poll tax. So the idea of poll tax was this, you wanted to go and vote. Then they said, okay, you need to pay $1. That's about uh, in $33 in, as of 2022, the equivalent of that. First of all, when you think about today voting, it's free. You just register to vote. Most people cannot be bothered. Imagine people have to pay to vote. Of course, they wouldn't even bother to vote. And that is exactly what the elite did in the South, where they just said, you want to vote, you need to pay. But you're already poor, and you don't. if, the, if you're voting for the elite and they're not really doing anything for you, why would you want to pay to then go and choose someone that's not going to help you? It became really sad, but the system was set up in a way that there was a divide and conquer, and that created a lot of poor uh, white people. And another thing about the story of poor white people in America is that when you talk about poverty, people always gravitate towards the uh, uh, black people because of slavery. It, it got a lot of press. It got a lot of international attention. It was abolished and then Jim Crow came into the picture. But you get the, the idea about people constantly talking about that. But then no, the American uh, 
consciousness is not really aware of the conditions of poor white people, especially from the South. And they were abandoned to themselves that even when the big migration came in the South, uh, where a lot of black people just left the South because of discrimination and racism and went North, a lot of them actually improved their situation. But that did not immediately transpire for the poor white, uh, white people in the South, partly because a lot refused to move and some were moved to really remote locations and that did not really help them economically until uh, later when the government decided they were going to do something about that, but that was well uh, over 50 or 60 years later. So that is, in a nutshell, Slums of America, poor white people.